So what is architecture? Architecture is the physical frame for life at first. So architecture is in a way everything. And then of course it is a, a profession, it is a discipline. And that's how I look at it, being an architect and a teacher in architecture. So I think architecture is an art and it's a science at the same time. It is related to questions of lifestyle, of philosophy, profound thinking about the human condition. And this implies, of course, uh, rather rational things uh, as well. So architecture is always very much um, um, related to economy, to organization of society in a very broad sense, the urban condition of human life, I would say. And um, architecture is a very collective um, discipline. It um, affects everyone. At the same time, I would say it's very personal too. And this is exactly the exciting and also dangerous thing about architecture. That as an individual or a collective, still small group of individuals, you're taking on responsibility for a whole society. And ideally even for something that would last over time. And this is a rather exceptional in our times, I think. So what can architecture do? I think architecture can do quite a lot <laughs> since uh, it is providing this, let's say, physical condition of everyday life. Not only architecture, but of course I think it has still an enormous impact on many levels. I relate it very much um, to the way we are organizing our cities. And at the same time, I could say it cannot do that much because in the end, it's only architecture. It's the inertia of material that we put somehow in place, but then it's how people would, would use it and would reject it or accept it. That is really um, decisive on what the architecture can do. But um, I cannot imagine a life without architecture. And I think there is no life on the planet for the human beings without architecture nowadays. And therefore it can do a lot. It can also do really harm and it can really um, um, hinder development because architecture is, as I said, a rather stable, static thing. Yeah? And therefore, therefore uh, it's always a question, is architecture helping, enabling, or is it rather doing the opposite? So how do you position yourself within the discourse? You know, I, I understand um, our office, myself, uh, my collaboration with Christoph Gantenbein uh, as, a, as a rather um, traditional uh, understanding of the profession of an architect. I'm not saying that I'm an old-fashioned person, but I like the idea that the architect is a kind of a homo universalis yeah, in the sense that we are really, I mean, we want to be involved with everything. Yeah? And as I said, uh, we are artists, we are scientists, we are part of an economical establishment, but at the same time we must be the most critical counterposition. So we really kind of <laughs> try to, to um, to integrate all sorts of activities in our society and that's the fantastic thing about an architect. And it's completely against the trend of specialization. So in this sense, I'm a really old-fashioned architect. I think we should not give up in being involved with everything. Yeah? And, uh, and also traditional in the sense, and this comes to our position and what I think is crucial to our understanding of the profession, that we, are f that we are looking forward, of course. I mean, we are involved with the future by definition, and we are contemporary by definition, but we also have the great privilege that knowledge in his uh, in, um, about history, about 
things that have been done centuries back is still relevant to us today. This is completely different, for instance, for let's say life sciences, medicine or so. I mean, of course, it's important also there to have a certain awareness about history and what has been done, I don't know, 150 years back. But it's not relevant any, every day for a doctor, a medical doctor, to look at the solutions of, I don't know, whatever, Madame Curie. You know? Whereas for us, I can take a book out of my library and look at a thought, at a drawing, at a proposal of, I don't know, 1785. And it can really help me to understand something about my current problem that I have on the table. And I think this is fantastic. That our, if we are able to somehow activate all this knowledge, to use this accumulation of culture and, and to take it further and to, to reactivate it, as I'm saying, I think this is fantastic. It's a privilege and it's a great pleasure. And therefore, uh, tradition, in the proper sense of the term, of tradere, of kind of giving, taking something and, and giving it, handing it over to the next one, and by doing this, transforming and reinterpreting, is a wonderful thing. And, and we, are, we are happy, I think, as architects, and lucky that we can do that, you know. So that's, that's uh, perhaps an explanation why I'm saying I try to be, in a way, a traditional, uh, old-fashioned architect. But of course, um, I, I'm um, ambitious enough to propose things for tomorrow, not for yesterday. I mean, this is clear, isn't it? Okay, so what is your design method? The design method is already, uh, um, I, I, I think, indicated by, the, by my, by my um, uh, talking about references. The transfer is something I consider fundamental when it comes to design. It's very general, I think, but still, uh, I, it goes back to this, to this um, p position I have that architecture is never produced ex nihilo. It is not produced out of yourself only but it refers to something because there is also a moment of objectivity in architecture. And, and transferring knowledge, looking I mean, more explicitly, this means looking at examples, understanding them, taking partly this example into kind of the specific condition of your project is at least one basic mechanism of designing, as I understand. Which I also find extremely enjoyable um, that you that you can kind of compose, arrange things, and so in terms of methods and also what we're doing with our students is the collage as an initial move into a project is is very fruitful and product productive in my in my understanding, and then this is only the beginning, of course, so a sort of uh, first transferring, integrating, bringing in um, images and ideas that, that eventually then come together in a sort of a collage. And, and then, of course, we concentrate very much on the, let's say, um, urban, urban setting of the project. And this means, practically speaking, that we build models in a rather small scale, where we really kind of work the body of the building and we do that not only as a sculpture uh, sculpt work of, um, of sculpture in the sense that we that we um, talk and look at proportions and, 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 and things but we rather try to understand the essence of a building of a setting uh, uh, through working this body, and this sounds a bit esoteric, but I think it works perfectly, that when you look carefully at, say, at let's say, uh, uh, the form and, and the expression, the physiognomy of an object that sits in a specific urban site, let's say a museum or a housing block, doesn't matter, it, you can already um, express many things about the life that would take place in that building. So when I look at an object in a model, 1 to 500, I see a scenario. I see a kind of a plot for that building, a film scenario, kind of. A, and, um, and, uh, and so we are testing in, in, 
in endless variations of variants, we're testing different, different scenarios through these different urban forms. Because I really convinced that you cannot kind of dissociate the urban condition of a project and its inner logic. Yeah? So that's where the type then comes in. And I think this is true even for a single family house or whatever. It's not related to scale and it's not related to the fact that it must be very dense or so on. Anyway, so that's then how we systematically, from that we have then that model that we are working and reworking again. And, that, and parallel to that, we're producing first images that are on the computer or collages, as I said. So that goes a bit in parallel because it's exactly the urban type and the scenario, the image. And that's also what we're doing with the students. And then, of course, you get more and more, more systematic, comes the plan in, where we then try always to come to the most simple plan in a very often complex condition of a, of a project. And, and what I think is important, that then the, the, the plan, the structure of the building has a very strong hierarchy. I don't like the idea that in the building there is, um, there is everything of the same sort of presence. You have to kind of implement a very strong hierarchy. I think this also helps to, to get strong expression. And then it goes on and then what you would see when, when we also look at our studio, um, we, we build very huge models when it comes then to the, to the architectural refinement. The, all the interior spaces we build physical models. Uh, which is a bit crazy because it's a lot of work and it's big and then we take photographs.